Jerry Corey, known as Irish or the Bellflower Bomber, was born on May 15, 1945, and grew up in a family of fighters. His father and two brothers were also professional boxers. Corey's journey into the ring began early, with his father introducing him to boxing at just five years old. Despite a serious illness, nephritis, sidelining him for years, Corey returned stronger, claiming the 1965 National Golden Gloves Championship at only 19 years old. Amazingly, he knocked out all five of his opponents in that tournament, a feat that remains unmatched. Over the course of his amateur career, Corey fought in over 200 bouts before turning pro the same year. In the late 1960s and early 70s, Corey was a powerhouse in the heavyweight division. During his prime, he was rated by the Ring magazine as the most popular fighter in boxing, becoming a fan favorite with his gutsy, all-action style. While he never secured a world title, Corey squared off against some of the biggest names in the sport, including two legendary bouts with Muhammad Ali. He claimed victories over former world champion Floyd Patterson and top contenders like Ron Lyle, Ernie Shavers, and Mac Foster, among others. However, Corey's aggressive style and frequent sparring without headgear led to significant damage over time. His attempts at comebacks in 1977, 1983, and 1992 compounded the wear and tear ultimately resulting in a severe case of dementia pugilistica. About professional career, Jerry Corey was one of the most popular and talented heavyweights of his era, though he never captured the world title. Raised in a boxing family, Corey had gloves on by the age of five and quickly became a force in the ring. By 1965, he launched his professional career, fighting 14 matches in his debut year, mostly in Los Angeles, where he quickly became a fan favorite. However, his journey wasn't easy. To supplement his income, he worked as a tire changer, and his early career saw a share of setbacks, including a loss to the seasoned Eddie Mackin. But his perseverance paid off when he entered the 1967 WBA tournament to crown a new champion after Muhammad Ali was stripped of his title. Corey's victory over former heavyweight champion Floyd Patterson in a split decision and a KO win over Thad Spencer set him up for a final against Jimmy Ellis. Despite entering the fight with a serious injury, Corey put on a brave performance but lost by majority decision. After a six-month layoff, he came back strong with a string of wins, including a dominant decision over the much larger Buster Mathis, setting up a 1969 showdown with Joe Frazier. In a brutal battle, he held his ground until the seventh round, when Frazier's relentless pressure and Corey's bloodied face forced the referee to stop the fight. Despite the loss, it was named Ring Magazine's Fight of the Year. Corey quickly rebounded, only to face another controversial loss to George Chivolo. But his career-defining moment came in 1970, when he agreed to face Muhammad Ali in Ali's highly publicized comeback fight. Though Corey was cut badly and the fight stopped after three rounds, it cemented his reputation as one of the bravest fighters willing to take on anyone, including Ali again in a 1972 rematch that ended in a similar fashion. The 1970s were his golden years. He knocked out top contender Mac Foster, dominated Ron Lyle in 1973, and surprised the hard-hitting Ernie Shavers with a first-round KO. Despite these victories, a rematch with Joe Frazier in 1974 proved too much, with Frazier once again overwhelming him. Afterward, Corey faced Ken Norton in a brutal 1975 fight, where he was stopped in the fifth round. This marked the beginning of the end for Corey's professional career, as the toll of his aggressive style and countless wars in the ring began to show. Corey retired in 1975 with a record of August 4, 50, but a comeback attempt in 1977 saw him struggle. He briefly returned to boxing in the 1980s, but suffered from early signs of dementia pugilistica, a tragic consequence of his warrior mentality in the ring. Jerry Corey passed away in 1999 at the age of 53, but his legacy endures, with a foundation established in his name to raise awareness of boxing-related dementia. He remains celebrated as a tough, crowd-pleasing fighter who, despite never winning a world title, fought the best of his era and left an indelible mark on the sport. About his legacy Corey's legacy as a boxer is marked by his undeniable toughness, skill, and charisma despite never capturing the World Heavyweight Championship. He was one of the most popular fighters of his era, 
known for taking on the biggest names in boxing, including Muhammad Ali, Joe Frazier, and George Chuvalo. Fans were drawn to Corey's fighting spirit. He was the great white hope during a time when the heavyweight division was dominated by black champions. Though Corey was celebrated for his resilience in the ring, his career also highlighted the dangers of the sport. His tendency to cut easily and his eventual struggles with dementia pugilistica, caused by repeated head trauma, became a tragic part of his story. In the latter part of his life, Corey's condition worsened, and he was cared for by family members before passing away in 1999 at the age of 53. His battles with dementia pugilistica underscored the long-term health risks associated with boxing, and in his memory, a foundation was established to raise awareness and support for those suffering from boxing-related brain injuries. Though he never reached the pinnacle of the sport as world champion, his career and his enduring fan base solidified his place in boxing history. His heart, grit, and willingness to fight anyone made him an unforgettable figure in the ring. That's a wrap for today's content. If you found it fascinating, give us a thumbs up, share it with your friends, drop a comment below, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button.